gentlemen, we begin the conference with the first plenary session of the day on the theme, Healthcare Innovation, Recoding Competitiveness. The eminent panelists for the session are Dr. B.R. Shetty, Founder and Chairman, NMC Healthcare, Dr. Azad Mupen, Chairman, Aster DM Healthcare Group, Mr. Suhail Mohammad Al Ansari, Executive Director, Mubadla Healthcare, and Mr. Puneet Malik, Group President and Global Head, Yes Bank. The session is being chaired by Dr. Arvind Lal, Chairman and Managing Director, Dr. Dr. Lal Path Labs Limited. May I invite the panelists? Panelists are here on the stage. Uh, I would request uh, um, Dr. Arvind Lal to kindly take the proceedings on. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my proud privilege and pleasure to welcome you to the opening plenary session of the Second India UAE conference here today in Dubai. This conference is a great initiative of All India Management Institute, known as IMA, and is a great opportunity for the business leaders of the two countries to network and discuss issues of mutual interest. We are privileged to have an outstanding panel of speakers in this session, people who have achieved great success in building very successful healthcare and businesses and who have transformed the healthcare sector. Dr. B.R. Shetty, my old friend, Dr. Mupin, Dr. Alansari, Mr. Malik, it is a pleasure to have you on this day and a very warm welcome to all of you. I am sure the audience will be enriched by learning about your thoughts on the theme of the session which is healthcare innovations recoding competitiveness. The healthcare sector is one of the most technologically sensitive sectors, and the new trends show an increasing use of sensors, data analytics, robotics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning in healthcare delivery. Big data and ubiquitous internet are changing the ways of accessing and offering healthcare and doing healthcare research and development. New technologies are empowering both the doctors and the patients. Wearable health devices, online healthcare service aggregators, and digital libraries of medical information and putting the patients in charge of their own healthcare. The doctors are able to access medical research and experience easily and offer care remotely. They can now take care of more patients in less time and do it better. Remote consultation and monitoring are crucial to increasing the access to healthcare and keeping the costs down. Travel and loss of earning hours is a big part of the overall healthcare cost. For non-critical issues, wearable sensors linked to smartphones can be a very big help. They can allow doctors to monitor their patients constantly and receive live information about their condition and intervene whenever required. Machines are making healthcare more complex and yet more exact. Robotics, injectable sensors, printable body parts, and artificial intelligence are becoming central to healthcare from diagnostics to surgery and post-operative healing. Healthcare never had such detailed data and accuracy of analysis at such a massive scale. Artificial intelligence is making it possible for doctors to benefit from the cumulative knowledge contained in health records, research papers, clinical studies, and many more. Today, healthcare research is led by software companies like IBM, Google, Microsoft. They are all creating an artificial intelligence system that not only match ailments with treatments, but also predict potential healthcare issues based on extensive data analysis. However, these new technologies are a business challenge to the healthcare establishment. The healthcare providers have to harness the new medical technologies to deliver best healthcare at scale and at affordable cost. 
Though India and the UAE may be competitors for medical tourism, the two countries have plenty of potential for collaboration in the healthcare sector. India is particularly strong in the talent department, and it has an extensive medical education system and outstanding expertise in some digital technologies. The UAE, on the other hand, is more idly and centrally located on the world map, and it can be a base for the Indian healthcare providers to reach many much more healthcare seekers from around the world. We are privileged to have many distinguished speakers in this session, and we would like to hear them about new challenges and opportunities which the new technology has brought in in the healthcare center sector. It is my proud privilege now to invite Dr. B. R. Shetty to address this conference. And before he takes the mic, I would like to read out a few lines about him. Dr. Shetty is a pioneer of the private healthcare industry in the UAE. He is a founder of NMC Healthcare, the largest private healthcare provider in the country. Starting in 1975, soon after the UAE had been established, he led the NMC's growth group growth into a multinational, multi-facility enterprise with interests in healthcare, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, medical trading, and financial services. He has founded Neo Pharma in Abu Dhabi to produce branded generics and for contract manufacturing. His trading company, NMC Trading, is one of the largest distributors in the UAE for many global brands of pharmaceuticals, medical devices, medical consumables, nutrition, and personal care products. He is also the chairman of the UAE Stock Exchange, a leader in money remittance service with presence in more than 30, sorry, UAE Exchange, a leader in money remittance service with presence in more than 30 countries. He has also acquired the foreign exchange firm TravelX, which has ATMs on many airports across the world. His achievements have been honored with many awards. He's a recipient of the Privileged Order of Abu Dhabi and the Padma Shri from the President of India, Dr. Shetty. Distinguished guests on the dais, my dear delegates, ladies and gentlemen, don't be scared that I brought some paper. Generally, I don't bring paper, no need to, because there are so many new faces here. I thought, let me just remember some names. Dr. Lal spoke everything about the what is the future industry, past industry, and also going to be now. But now, doctor, you also mentioned about health tourism. Our main idea now to promote UAE as health tourism. I thank you very much for that. Let me tell you, I will not waste time more because you have got other speakers. You will hear more from Dr. Suhail as well as Dr. Azad Mupan about the health industry. I will just start from Dr. Lal's comment, the quality health care research. See, I, I will tell you my story, though he told some, but I am not telling about the other things. What I am trying to tell you, Anything health industry has on today is nothing but exploitation in India. Let me be very open to you, Dr. Lal. It's not that's the system what we like to do. We want equality, affordability, and ethical practice in the healthcare industry. That's very important. This is what our ruler, former ruler, Dr. I mean, our Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayyan, peace be upon his soul, he was continuously telling in the black and TV, black and white TV at that time, when I was jobless, I was watching. And when I cleared my all the loans, thanks to Bank of Baroda, who supported me, I cleared and I started with the vision of his saying that quality health care for all at affordable cost. At that time, when he was giving everything free, Sheikh Mohammed, Sheikh Rashid bin Maktoum, our Dubai ruler, peace be upon his soul, he was also giving free treatment in this country. 
So that's the time when I started charging a little bit, people are laughing at me. What, everything is free, Shetty is charging. But still, I didn't pursue, I, didn't per I did pursue, and there was no question of looking back. And as a result, we have got now 40 hospitals, 45 hospitals all over the world, other than UAE, and we are doing extremely well in the stock market. We are registered in London stock, and we have increased by 10 times share value, a doctor that will be very happy to tell you, and that's the beauty of our quality, healthcare, affordable cost, and also ethical practice. And I'm telling you, this once you have this type of things in mind, you will be very, very happy. If at all I'm awarded this order of Abu Dhabi, as Dr. Lal said, that's because of the initiative for the healthcare industry and also pharma industry when I started. Where Sheikh Zayed, peace be upon his soul, he visited at least three times to our factory site. Then he called me, Shetty, you are contributing a lot to our country. Do you need a passport? This exactly he asked. I said, Highness, you are blessing. So that's the type of legacy I enjoy as on today. I'm still continuing to contribute in the healthcare industry in all around and without any hesitation. Now, as it said, UAE, India. Let me also tell you, I'm an ardent student of TMA Pi in Manipal. Mr. Mondas Pai is here. He's the chairman. So that's where I started my ethical practice at that time. To start a quality health care at that time, to give, serve the poor, Dr. T.M.A.P.A. started Manipal, Industry, Manipal uh, Medical College. I, I was in fourth standard, I mean ninth standard at that time. I carried granite stone to contribute. This is what he wanted, expected, as a NCC, contribute to the building the, building the, in the college again, NCC, we started this. As a result, I did my pharmacy course there. Not only that, they put me in the board of directors of Manipal Medical Society, which owns all these institutions. So what I'm trying to tell you, when you do some good practice, ethical practice, service in mind, you, God is there to give you rewards. My dear friends, again, here, same. I'm having succeeded in this part of the world. <clears throat> now I'm contributing back to India. I'm giving full all India level medical facilities, whichever the way, like Dr. Mupan. He is now gone, not gone, he's here, but still he's doing medical university and other things in India. I thank him for that, and I am doing irrespective of caste, creed, or state. Uh, since Modi came to India in power, I thought it's now the time for us to go back and contribute to the progress of India. Started with Kerala, which is the communist place. Still, I survived. Now we are making 500 bed hospitals. 500 bed hospital there, and Chhattisgarh, I have not even visited when I acquired that hospital, like this, Raipur, Chhattisgarh, Nepal, Egypt, up to there I have gone, and I'm telling you, let us keep all the op doors open to give quality service to the people, patients, at affordable price, and that's where the blessing comes. And when you keep quality in mind, service in mind, Without sustainability, business should be there. Keep the business, hospital business, as a business, but to sustain the business, not to make money or grab money. I'll tell you my lifetime story. When you do this, you will, money will follow you. Money will follow you. So please, I don't keep, the, don't open the facilities to make money. Now, Cleveland Hospital in Abu Dhabi, they, she, his sinus shakes has started under Dr. Suhail, this is the CEO now, and I'm sure this and our hospital, 400 bed hospital in Khalifa City, and Mopan's hospital, and also other good hospitals here, will contribute to the healthcare industry, also health tourism in this country. With these few words, I would like to, to give this, without reading anything, I would like to give it to Dr. Lal to proceed further. Thank you very much, dear friends. We are here. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Shetty. It was a pleasure, as always, listening to your thoughts on the future past of healthcare, and especially in the UAE. And I congratulate you again for this, you know, thumping success. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Azad Mupin to address the conference. Dr. Azad Mupin, I don't think requires any real introduction but since now he is in another part of the world, 
so i will take this you know risk of again introducing to him to you he is an outstanding doctor and an entrepreneur and has built up an international network of healthcare facilities over the past 3 decades he has set up more than 300 facilities including hospitals and pharmacies in the uae india and other countries in asia and africa he has repaid his debt to his native kerala where he studied medicine by putting up a medical college and hospitals over there thank you very much dr Shed, dr mupan a passionate philanthropist he offers many healthcare services without charge to those who find it difficult to access commercial healthcare the services offered by dr mupan's foundation include free dialysis which has now been taken up from last year by the government of india also if they have picked up one subject in the healthcare it is the dialysis services all over india community cancer screening which is very much part of our national non commun non communicable disease kind of a you know setup free pediatric cardiac surgery and special needs schools dr mupan as late as last week has been appointed as the president of the india uae business leaders forum his contribution to the economy and the society has been recognized both in india and the uae he is a recipient of the padma shri from the president of india and also the arab health award he has also been mentioned in dispatches by the forbes 100 uh, you know list and now it is my real pleasure to invite dr mupan to share his thoughts with us dr mupan thank you very much uh, dr lal for that uh, glowing uh, introduction uh, i must first of all uh, thank dr lal and aima and uh, mr sunil for uh, giving me this opportunity to be a part of this uh, great gathering uh, dr shetty who is a pioneer of healthcare in uae mr suhail anzari who is from mubadala and puneet mr puneet who is a friend from yes bank uh, my dear uh, friends it's so surprising to see at 9 o'clock such a huge gathering which shows the interest in the india uae relationship which is at the highest in the last two years ever since prime minister modi visited uae and the visits by his highness sheikh mohammed bin zayed and other dignitaries from uae to india it has been at the highest level of uh, uh, the relationship and we are so glad that we are all playing a small part in that growth story in that relationship which is already at a very high level and which is being tried to carry it forward coming back to the subject today i don't want to digress i just want to focus on that as has been ben mentioned by dr lal and uh, dr shetty healthcare is an area which has got huge requirement huge potential and this is one area where when you do business you also touch the lives of people that is the best part of healthcare and we have been lucky in the last 30 years to be in uae where we played our role starting from a small clinic to now large number of establishments in all the six gcc countries as well as in india and other countries and we have been there and we of course have grown ourselves financially but more importantly we could touch the lives of millions of people in this endeavor now healthcare is changing but one reality is that in healthcare even though there has been a change the change has not been at par with the changes which happened in other industries in the technology front yes there has been huge leap in the investigation area like the invention of mris 
CT scans, and many, many other investigation facilities, and in which it was the technology companies which were involved, not the doctors as such, of course, they were in the back end, and it was Siemens or GE or Philips who were actually in the forefront who brought in that technology leap 30 or 40 years back, which we are still enjoying with some improvements. But if you look at the healthcare IT as such, it took a back seat, and which is unfortunate. If you look at the way in which we were doing banking, Puneet is here from his bank, we were doing retailing, which is going to be discussed. If you look at even airline booking or any of that matter, we have completely dissociated from the earlier way in which we were doing that. We don't go to the bank now to do banking. We don't go to a shop now for doing shopping. We don't go to the travel agent to book a ticket. Everything has changed, but still, healthcare mostly is practiced in the good old way where we go to a doctor, sit there, wait in front of his consultation room, get inside, get a prescription, or get an order for an investigation, which takes its own sweet time, two or three hours, and then you go back, get that, and then you get a prescription from the doctor, go to the pharmacy, and get a medication prescription, and come back home, which may take a full day. Is it required? Nothing has changed over the last many years, but it is changing. The best thing is that it is changing. It's changing completely in a way that sitting at your home, you can do this whole process because in 80% of the cases, there is no requirement for a doctor to see you to offer you a prescription in a normal illness. You can sit at home, connect with him on a Skype or whatever method, tell your history, make the payment, uh, if there is an investigation required. Now, there are methods in which you can get it done through some of the investigations which are available, even at home, or somebody can come to your home and do that. You can get the prescription sent to the pharmacy, and from there, somebody can deliver it to your home. Whereas, sitting at home in one or two hours, this whole procedure, without any movement from the home, can happen. This is a very, very simple thing in which healthcare can a lot of other things which are happening. A lot of other things, for example, sitting in US, somebody can operate a patient who is in India through a robotic surgeon. I mean, robotic uh, Da Vinci robot. It's not required that you have to be in the room where the patient is to do a surgery. He can be sitting anywhere, theoretically, which is not happening now. But we know that robots are there, and it is being done in the hospital. You don't require somebody sitting around and doing monitoring of a patient. You can do that monitoring from India for a patient who is sitting in an ICU, uh, lay, laying down in an ICU in the US, and that's quite possible. A lot of things are happening which are so exciting and where machines are taking over. Reading of X-rays or MRIs or even pathology slides can happen in places where it is possible at a lower cost without the patient or the material being transferred. This can be done through teleradiology or telepathology or whatever you call it. It's changing. There is a huge impact happening in the field of healthcare through IT and innovation. And we are so happy. Somebody recently said, I think it was Vinod Koshla, who was involved with the Pendium chip, who told recently that, according to him, 80% of the doctors are redundant. It's only 20% which are required, and the rest can be done by machines. <coughs> it's possible. Being a doctor myself and running a healthcare organization, I'll be pushing out of business if I do that. But if I am not doing that, I'll be out of business even earlier. There's a 10x change happening, and we all have to understand that, adopt that. That is the most important message. And now, coming to the theme of this, the second part of that, how is it possible for 
UAE and India to cooperate in this very, very important area. As has been mentioned by Dr. Lal, we have huge amount of skilled manpower which is available in India, which can be utilized for providing all these services. UAE can be a place where high-level care can be given because people would like to come here because of the accessibility, the infrastructure, and because of the image of Dubai, and would like to get treatment. And we can get the best available talent from our country here. Together we can work, and we can make it into a destination where people, instead of going to the Western countries, they start coming here in search of UAE or India for healthcare. There's huge opportunity for India also to utilize the wealth that is available in this country. We require a large number of medical professionals, starting from doctors. To just tell you an example, in India, we have 400 medical colleges from which about 50,000 doctors are coming out every year. And according to WHO requirements, there is a gap of 600,000 doctors as on date if you want to have one doctor for 1,000 population. And that gap to be filled, it will take many, many decades if you don't double or triple your number of medical seats. There is an opportunity to invest into healthcare education, not only for doctors, but for other areas also, nurses, paramedics. And all these people can be utilized for whatever service I was offering. We can uh, get people from here trained in India, from all the GCC countries, or from the Middle East, or from Africa, trained in India in such institutions which will have huge impact because we have excellent teachers and excellent facilities where it can be done. And to the last but not least, I would like to say that together we can do a lot to countries which require huge help from not having money, not having skills. The African countries are lack of skills, infrastructure, and lack of everything. We can together, through telemedicine, do the diagnosis and through whatever methods, send the generic medicines which are available being manufactured in India to the African country and treat the patients there who are very badly in requirement. I was recently listening to somebody who said that there are 400 refugee camps in the whole world. We may just be knowing about something happening in Syria. 400 refugee camps, with about 18 million people in these refugee camps. And there is a requirement to provide health care there. Telemedicine and whatever I mentioned about Africa is also pertinent for that. And the resources of, uh, financial resources of US, I mean UAE, along with the manpower and technology powers of India can do wonders in this area also. I'm so happy that this conference has been organized with a very, very strong theme to focus on technology advancement and how we can actually leverage it and hope that this will just set the trend for addressing this together. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Dr. Mubin, for an excellent address and your insights into the healthcare scenario especially in this changing environment uh, for the healthcare business and giving us these new uh, pointers. Before we uh, ask uh, the next speaker, I would just like to draw your attention to the e-commerce industry which has sprouted up you know, recently. In 2015, and I'm talking only about Indian figures, the total e-commerce stood at 62,614 crores. It is supposed to go up to 2,62,000 crores in 2018 and 6,63,000 crores by 2020. And just to give you an idea of what our own healthcare industry is up to in the digital space, ZocDoc valued at $2 billion and Practo valued at $650 million 
is helping patients search the nearest doctor while providing doctors IT solutions to manage their operations better. Liberate, valued at $200 million, is helping patients interact with the doctors on the app. One MG or one milligram, valued at $100 million, is helping patients discover the alternatives to the medicines prescribed by the doctor and also selling medicines. Healthians, lab advisor, lab street, well, they are hitting people like us by rebranding and standardizing the local labs and bringing them onto one platform. NatMeds, delivering medicine at home by allowing users to order through the app. Portia, valued at $300 million, taking the hospital to your home. Apple, of course, is launching devices to help you stay fit. Delhi Rounds is helping doctors that to share patients' clinical case studies with each other. So digital health in India is currently in a stage where commerce was in 2010, or digital payments were in 2014. 18 to 20 months of building and nurturing is required before the bulk adoption will happen. And this period can even become shorter if the government of India sets in by some kind of a regulation. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my proud privilege to request Mr. Suhail Ansari to address the conference. An outstanding leader, he is the executive director of one of the most important healthcare organizations in the UAE, Mubadla Healthcare. He manages Mubadla's world-class healthcare facilities in partnership with leading medical organizations. He is also on the boards of important organizations, including the Medical Holding Company and Cleveland Clinic, and he is a member of the Health Sector Strategic Committee of Health Authority Abu Dhabi. Over to you, Mr. Ansari. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, uh, distingu distinguished guests and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Zlal, uh, Mupen, and Dr. Shetty, uh, thank you very much for your kind invitation. It's very humbling and an honor to be here. Um, I will try to keep up with the pace that has been uh, set. The bar is very high, so um, I'll hopefully keep you awake uh, during my talk. Um, there's a lot of colleagues and friends that I see around the room, and it, it really resonates to, to uh, and, and further emphasizes the strength of the relationship between the United Arab Emirates and India, which is historic and goes back centuries, um, as, as uh, we, we all know. Um, uh, the business ties have been stronger than ever, and the digi digital age poses an opportunity for us to further that relationship even more so. The, in India is the UAE's second uh, most significant trading partner, uh, with a bilateral annual trade exceeding $60 billion. Furthermore, in the next 10 years, United, the United Arab Emirates plans to spend and invest somewhere north of $60 billion, $5 billion, my apologies, into infrastructure in India. What that tells us is that the relationship is poised not only for growth, but to really, really spearhead in an exponential direction. Healthcare has always and will continue to always be underserved, mainly due to the growing population and exceeding demands of the um, patients that we have, be it through self-education or the fact that there's more accessibility being demanded in areas that are perhaps not so central as major, major cities. I'd like, you to leave with, with, I'd like to leave you with a thought before we get into the actual subject of the um, uh, conversation, in that without Indian expertise, the healthcare practitioners, the constructioners, the capital and vision, we as the United Arab Emirates would not have been able to build nor have access to the healthcare systems that we have today. The pioneers such as Dr. Shetty, Dr. Mupen, who have been founders and contributors to a significant healthcare infrastructure spearheaded by the private sector have only catalyzed us, uh, the, the, the other players, foreign investors, and even more so the government to re-look re at how healthcare is being delivered at home. We all know that we have gone through a massive revolution in the healthcare regulatory environment across the country. 
bringing in mandatory health insurance, focusing on prevention rather than curative medicine. And all of that being said, started off with building a foundation and a platform to meet the needs of what exists today. But we are at a point in time where partnerships need to come together, be it cross borders or across, across oceans, or even so across the road between the public and private sector to collaborate and really, really understand how we can further access to those who cannot have access to healthcare, whether they are in rural areas of the United Arab Emirates, which form about 30% of the population, or as I've been told, in rural areas of India, which exceed 70% uh, of, of its population. So what I'd like to uh, touch base on is three core areas today. First of all, what are the technology strategies we need to adapt in order to remain ahead of the curve? We may be in a reasonably good place today in terms of healthcare provision, but if we want to exceed and be at the global front of healthcare, we do need to look into how we can employ and deploy technology even further. How do we balance this investment into, te into healthcare uh, technology and ensure that we have some uh, cost control over this? At the end of the day, this has to be sustainable. Sustainable today for its longevity in the future. And of course, between the right balance of the two, technology can offer a new chapter of healthcare that can provide access to many, many who have not seen that before. So in order to, to look at the technologies that we should be um, adopting as healthcare providers, um, it, we could not be just focused on what healthcare IT and digital health would mean. But there are so many tools, be it telemedicine, remote monitoring, 3 printing, or robotic surgery that exist in many parts of the world but have not necessarily been globalized to reach this side of our planet. The cha challenges that we're all uh, faced with that are global and not necessarily unique to any one individual or country include increased demand, a very high outpatient utilization, population growth, access through insurance, the pressures and cost containment efforts on existing systems in a part of the world such as the UAE and India, the growth and exponential growth of a chronic disease uh, platform when a young population is not necessarily um, in its healthiest state of mind, that's a time bomb waiting to explode. If we don't intervene today, we will have a big problem in our hands that will take generations to address. More, more challenging is also how do we use technology and to, to influence behaviors of the patients and bring this culture shock, if you want to call it, for lack of better words, in a very positive manner to ensure that individuals also take charge of their own well-being and health and be more proactive rather than reactive. As we see um, that the demand for healthcare services to grow, hospitals continue to be under time pressure, financial and time pressure, because at the end of the day, what is most important to any healthcare provider is the benefit to the patient. Everything is centered around the patient and therefore the doctor's time with the patient becomes even more valuable. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Using digital health, we have an opportunity not only to uh, pr better predict the way healthcare is diagnosed, managed, or even prevented, but it also al allows our physicians and our clinical uh, professionals to make better healthcare divisions, uh, decisions, driving better outcomes and efficiencies, and increasing patient experience. This is especially true through the implementation of national electronic medical uh, initiatives. Uh, electronic medical records are dispersed around the countries in both cases. But the platform is there and the technologies and solutions are in place. We are very well aware that the um, expertise and the technological advancements of our friends just across uh, with, with a three-hour uh, plane ride in India do have solutions that can better enable us to have our systems talk to one another, to, for us to consolidate that information and data one another and use the power of big data to predict and prevent the well-being of our uh, population. Our tech-savvy generation is ready to take a more active role in healthcare. So using mobile applications, using um, uh, technologies, to, to, to further empower the patients can help them better manage themselves. Investing in integrated healthcare information systems will not only um, uh, create efficiencies, more importantly, it will improve the overall quality of patient care and safety. And hopefully, at the end of the day, 
uh, benefit not only the patient, but also the longevity of any healthcare investment that an investor ultimately has to uh, take a risk with. This comes at a cost, however. And the question that we're always asked in a growing economy is that, well, healthcare is very expensive and it continues to grow. How can we reduce spend in healthcare? Personally, um, I have to say that is the most challenging question to answer because there really is no answer to it other than accepting the fact that with a growing population and an aging one, it's a fact that one has to invest more intelli intelligently in healthcare. You turn the, you turn the question on its head. Uh, upfront investment today will have a long-term benefit, both cost efficiency-wise and productivity-wise in the long run. Technology's impact in the hospital is typically defined by its efficiency and how it plays a huge role in clinical outcomes. More importantly, the reduction of human error, overutilization, and ultimately shorter hospital stays. Let me give you an example of what we've, exist, uh, what, what we've achieved here in the United Arab Emirates through global partnerships. Our good friends and the doctors spoke very briefly about the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, a partnership that we may have entered with an American uh, group, as the name suggests. However, the partnerships that entailed and brought that massive effort together did not and were not limited to one American partnership. There were multiple Indian companies involved. There were multiple European companies involved, be it across the technology, supply chain, management, or pharmaceutical areas that, that it took to bring it to fruition. But what that brought it uh, to, together was the development of a private virtual cloud that enables us to create a foundation to better utilize that investment and increase the functionality of the hospital across every angle that we can. Together, that is a UAE and internationally um, developed IP that we have and we can consolidate and we can capitalize on, whether it be through marketing and, um, and, and exploiting it throughout the rest of the United Arab Emirates with the same founding partners who engaged in this together with us, or perhaps share some learnings with our good friends in India. It's, we've always been very dependent and will continue to be dependent on the expertise, the education system, and the advancements that come across from India. We would also like to reverse that trend a little bit and share some of our experiences that we have uh, consolidated together in this area. The bigger prize is, uh, is, is, is uh, slightly more ambitious, however. Not only will we use technology to bring social as well as economic gains in terms of wider access to those that we seek to serve, but the right balance between innovation and cost will only increase access to healthcare so that we keep patients where they belong and not necessarily clog up our emergency departments with the wrong type of uh, patients that do not belong in there. More importantly, improve their quality and ang uh, angle of life. The types of technology uh, that, that, that have been um, emerging and continue to be uh, growing have very, very slightly entered the arena today. Whether it be the 24-7 non-emergency access through telemedicine that we have ex established through partnerships um, that enable any individual, mother, uh, father, or grandmother, to call in the middle of the night to receive medical advice from a physician through telemedical care using technology, be it a camera, um, MMS, or WhatsApp in many cases, as, as we all know, um, uh, allows the, the, the patients not only to have a peace of mind but be given the right advice so that uh, their, their medical care is better addressed. And at the same time, that their, uh, the, their, the patient flow in the healthcare system is managed in a more efficient manner. Does a child with a fever need to be in the emergency department for four or five hours in the middle of the night when it's just a flu? Probably not. But that is a typical call we get. 60% of our telemedicine calls are coming from concerned mothers in the middle of the night. Personal example is my own wife. She abuses that system more than anyone else. We try to keep her away from the emergency department. <clears throat> at the forefront of e-health innovation in the region, our Heart and Vascular Institute at the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, which collaborates and has begun to collaborate with various partners, including NMC's Royal Hospital, given that, uh, that, that a very ambitious investment was made into acute care medicine over there, posed an opportunity for us to collaborate collaborate to find a means to, again, leverage each other's expertise and, uh, and, and, and establishments. We, we offer a remote home monitoring service with patients that have implantable devices such as pac pacemakers or defibrillators. These patients can then be monitored remotely, whether they be a patient of the Cleveland Clinic, NMC's Royal Hospital, and hopefully more other partners that will come across. 
the patient benefits from being able to travel. They're not prevented from being mobile. They no longer are prevented from uh, seeing some family members. That mobility and access is exactly what will drive better e experiences, but more importantly, increase access and healthcare in the growing uh, future. We have a very similar program uh, in our epilepsy monitoring capability. Um, we use our partners in Ohio as the Cleveland Clinic uh, to, m to monitor epilepsy patients in a 24-7 uh, manner in a safe and controlled environment. We use technology to record and review seizures that are unpredictable by nature and are rarely witnessed by human beings and the human eye. This allows physicians to pinpoint the exact origin and nature of epileptic episodes so one can deliver a personalized approach towards managing that care. That one example with the, our partner in the U.S. is a great example to look at how we can encourage the, both the UAE and Indian sites to pursue the geographical um, uh, separation between the two countries to leverage the capabilities that each has to offer. Why can't we do more of that between the two? I'm sure the opportunity is there. I'm sure the potential is there. We just want to encourage one another to do so. And it should nece not necessarily just be limited to the likes of the company that I represent, but across the board, between the private and public sectors, between the countries. Technology means that access can no longer be, no longer be an excuse for world-class healthcare. It's a true achievement of our times. It is time that we put our forces together. We make treatment more relevant, accurate, and impactful. We can drive efficiency for the good of the patients and the clinicians alike, and ultimately guarantee university accessibility. Our ongoing relationships and expertise can make this a reality. I encourage everybody to make the best of this unique opportunity and focus on innovation. I thank you once again uh, for your time and pass over to Dr. Lai. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Al Ansari, for sharing your perspective on the, the current scene and where you see it going in the next few years. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear you. And uh, I would just like to uh, make a, a few points about artificial intelligence in medicine. So first of all, that everybody knows that it is being used for medical records. But I would like to point out that artificial intelligence research branch of Google launched its Google DeepMind Health Project, which is used to mine the data of medical records in order to provide better and faster health service. This project is in its initial phase, and at present they are cooperating with the Moorsfield's Eye Hospital NHS Foundation Trust to improve eye treatment. Simultaneously, IBM Watson launched its special program for oncologists, which is able to provide clinicians evidence-based treatment options. Watson for Oncology has an advanced ability to analyze the meaning and context of the structured and unstructured data in clinical notes and reports that may be critical for selecting a treatment pathway. Then by combining attributes from the patient's file with clinical expertise, external research and data, the program identifies potential treatments, plans for a patient. So as somebody just pointed out, that doctors may be redundant after a few years. So with that in mind, I would now go on to our next speaker, and that is Mr. Puneet Malik, Group President and Global Head, Corporate Finance Urban Infrastructure Banking of Yes Bank. His extensive portfolio includes the healthcare sector, along with hospitality, reality, and education. He is responsible for product development, building human capital, and ensuring effective service delivery. He is also a member of many industry associations, including the Construction Industry Development Council and National Real Estate Development Council. Over to you, Mr. Malik. And we, we have 10 minutes, please. First of all, uh, thank you to Aima for giving us an opportunity to come here and uh, speak before you. It's always a pleasure to share the dais with 
from esteemed personalities, uh, Dr. Shetty, Dr. Lal, Dr. Mopin, and Mr. Ansari. It's indeed a pleasure to be here and share some of our thoughts with you. Yeah. Uh, at the onset, uh, I would like to uh, honor and privilege to address this August gathering. The cause is very noble, and uh, we, I'd like to share some of the thoughts of the organization where I belong to. Being an Indian, it's always a pride and pleasure to be present here and see how Indians are creating wonders in this country. And we are really proud of the Indians who are doing great work here. And we wish the Indians, the Indians who are sitting here, and who are not sitting here as well, they should also contribute to the growth of India, the mother country. A brief about the institution that I belong to, I work for an institution called JS Bank. Uh, the reason I'm uh, trying to say something about the, about the institution is to give you an idea as to what is the growth potential in India. I think as far as India and UAE are concerned, India has a huge talent pool, uh, which gives a lot of opportunities to develop UAE and uh, Middle East and GCC. At the same time, I see a lot of wealth pool in uh, UAE and Middle East, which can be channelized to India. Uh, in terms of Yes Bank, uh, uh, just to give you a brief uh, snapshot, healthcare has been a very part, important part of our DNA. Uh, as India's new generation private sector bank, uh, we are trying to change the India's uh, urban land uh, life space. We are one of the largest private sector healthcare finances in India. We finance some of the biggest hospitals, including a single uh, location, 1,000 bed hospital. Uh, I was discussing with uh, Dr. Mupin and uh, also with Dr. Shetty. The scale in India is very different from what uh, we have here. I mean, uh, typical size in India of a multi-speciality hospital would not be less than 500 beds today. That's the economy, the scale that we talk in India. In terms of a banking presence, uh, we uh, offer all kind of speciality services, including uh, you know, uh, services for IPO, M&A advisory, and transaction banking. We've created some very specific products for cash management services, especially for the hospital sector. We've been associated with some of the great names in India, some uh, uh, names like Manipal, as was mentioned here, uh, names like uh, Fortis, Max. Uh, we work very closely with them, and we are the preferred banking partners. I just want to give you some idea in terms of what is the scale in India. I think uh, our panelists have very uh, comprehensively covered what is the technology disruption that's happening in uh, creating, uh, that's being created out in healthcare space because of uh, technology. Uh, in terms of scale, if I was to tell you, uh, I think uh, the technology per se is disruptive, but it's essentially the companies that make it disruptive. I think technology is as good as the individual who uses it. As the credit for any disruption uh, rests not only with the instrument itself, but it is the hands of the, that drive that instrument. Indian healthcare is witnessing a very tremendous uh, change. Uh, just to give you a snapshot, uh, when we started uh, working in this space, uh, and I'm talking, we started the bank in 2005, I want to give these numbers to give you a sight as to how India is growing. We started in 2005 and uh, with a, I would say, a number of what, uh, less than $50 million. That was the capital which with the bank was started. And uh, today we are almost close to $30 billion. So we've grown almost something like uh, 600 times in the last 10, 12 years. And I am glad to share with you, even the healthcare space has grown the same way, growing at almost like 25 to 30% every year. So that's the kind of opportunity that exists in healthcare in India. How technology has helped India in the last couple of years, a few, a few examples towards that. In terms of average spend per hospitalization, you know, uh, we, what we have seen is that has doubled in 10 years from 12,500 rupees to 26,000. That's the kind of uh, the hospitalization spend that has gone up. Inflation has gone up in India. We are seeing medical inflation going up almost to 13%. Professional costs, per capital expenditures have gone up. So in spite of that, uh, I mean, if you look at these numbers, you will see that uh, probably uh, in a day is a high inflationary economy. But in spite of that, in terms of healthcare, what we are say uh, saying is that because of the technology, the costs have not gone up that much. Even today, as we speak, the cost of surgical procedures in India 
have remained more or less stable. Uh, we can do cardiac interventions for less than $10,000. We can do an orthopedic surgery and neurosurgery less than $7,500 in India. I was talking to uh, Dr. Shetty, Dr. Ryan Hudrali, and his dream is to do a cardiac surgery in India of dollars So that's the kind of uh, space we are looking at. At the same time, uh, if you look at uh, what has been the impact of technology in terms of uh, impact uh, on the outcomes, it has been phenomenal. I can share you with you the numbers uh, of India. In 1995, out of the 20% of surgical interventions that were done, they had to be readmitted within 30 days of the discharge. So that was the kind of uh, you know uh, treatments that were being offered at that time. Through technology interventions, today we see that number has come down to as less as 10%. So almost half of the numbers come back post-surgery, again for a treatment. That's because of better technology, I would say. We see a much better utilization of human resources. The doctor's requirement, in our financial language, we call it doctor's requirement per bed. That has come down significantly uh, over the last 10 years. In terms of preventive outreach, which is a very important precursor to good health care, in 1995, just to share with you a number, one in 10 hospitals involved late diagnosis, late diagnosis in 2013. This number was 1 to 20 in 1995. What it essentially meant was that in 1995, what out of 10 cases, one case could have been avoided if we had a proper diagnosis, which is number has come down to one, one out of 20. So that's the advantage of technology we are seeing. Very quickly, I'll cover some of the points which uh, you know uh, all my esteemed panelists have covered in the last uh, one hour. Um, essentially, if, if we talk of uh, the objectives, uh, three broad objectives that we see in um, technology providing, one is uh, in terms of improving healthcare access. I think the role of technology has to be in improving, providing improving healthcare. The other is in providing improving patient experience. And third, which most people tend to forget is improving staff experience. I think when you see doctors working around the clock, and in, 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 in a sense, if we can provide them a better healthcare experience, that itself uh, out of technology, that itself will be a great achievement. In terms of improving healthcare, uh, we, we have seen mobile apps, which have been talked about greatly out here. That's been one of the uh, features that has led to large care improvement in healthcare. We've seen a lot of hospitals setting up primary care and wellness centers. And uh, these have been like outreach programs, which have helped us in uh, improving the utilization of these facilities. We've seen a lot of improvement in knowledge flow because of uh, technology. In terms of, uh, it's a common sight in today's metro, you have on apps which can not only give you transcriptions, but can also advise you in terms of what kind of treatment you can, and you can access your doctor online. We have an improving patient experience. Uh, this is largely due to the marriage of the software and the, develop and the hardware. And we have a very, uh, the best practices in CRM and, uh, you know, and ERP which we believe is going to further improve the impact on patient experience. I think medical prescription online is something which is uh, coming up in a build way. Some of the technologies which I see are going to change the uh, way going forward is mHealth. I think uh, mobile health is, will be the key innovation in this sector going forward. The other will be remote diagnosis, which will be low cost portable innovations. For example, you know, you, we would have something like, which we are still, uh, you know, uh, we are doing it, but not in a big way is wireless health monitors that measures your blood pressure, your oxygen saturation, your pulse, your body temperature and stuff like that. Telemedicine and uh, wearable solutions is something which we are seeing. We, we tend to wear those uh, bands with us and that help us in you know communicating with our doctors much better. I think one area where India needs a lot of support is in terms of uh, medical Education. I think uh, we uh, we have uh, good hospitals. As uh, Doctor Mupin said, we almost like have 400 medical colleges and 60,000 doctors coming out of it every year. We need another about 60,000 doctors more in India. So in that context, I would uh, end by saying that uh, the sector provides immense opportunities for all those who believe in servicing the mankind while meeting their professional objectives. In Indian context, the scale provides for great opportunities to invest and earn. I wish the conference all the success. Thank you.